Okay, so I'm, I'm Tara. I'm a training manager and science communicator at Climate Outreach. Um, so we're one of Europe's leading climate communications organisations, but we're based here in Oxford. And so our purpose is to ensure that climate change and its impacts are both understandable, accepted and adopted by the wider breadth of society. So over the next seven minutes, I'm going to be talking about the impacts of climate change in Oxford and how, as a society, we can respond to them through public engagement. So as we know, speaking from the kind of global aspects of what's going to be happening around our world, yes, in the global south, uh, countries are going to be suffering quite highly from climate change. But that doesn't mean that here in Oxford we won't also be discovering deep changes in our systems, in our climate systems as well. So we'll see to expect a heavier rainfall across the UK, which will lead to more frequent localised flooding. And some of you might remember in January 2014, after a very wet winter, Oxford is flooded as the Thames, or the Thames flooded, and Oxford had closed 40 of its roads, uh, making it an inaccessible. So while floods happen, and they've happened before, and they'll happen again, we now have the evidence which shows that these extreme weather events are going to become much more frequent and much more intense as the planet warms. And then in July this year, Oxford broke its record and hit 36 degrees. This put a lot of pressure on Oxford's health services in keeping vulnerable people cool and hydrated. So heat stress, which is caused from high nighttime temperatures and also an increase in humidity, can cause illnesses when the body is unable to cool itself down. As temperatures increase, severe heat waves will become more common in Oxford and expected deaths due to heat waves or heat exposure would be expected to rise. Last summer, I joined my colleagues visiting a farm in North Oxfordshire and this was during last summer's heat wave, where a local farmer reported losing his supply of cabbage and cauliflower due to a hot and dry spell that was too long for the vegetables to cope. He's now trying to find a way to figure out what vegetables are resilient to both long, cold and frosty temperatures, as well as long, hot, dry summers. A changing climate will also increase our demand for energy in Oxford as we plug in more fans and more air conditioning units and during those frozen winters when we keep our central heating on for longer, putting further pressure on our energy system. And the global impacts of climate change, such as biodiversity loss and a change in the global food system, will hit us in a way, such as increased food prices, which, ha which will have quite a negative impact on, commun on poorer communities here in Oxford. So, in order to understand these impacts, it's really important for us to eliminate our carbon emissions immediately, but also giving communities the power to respond to the climate emergency is essential. So we need to do things differently, as well as putting together plans for adaptation, reaching net zero carbon emissions is a priority. Over half of the cuts required to reach net zero emissions in the UK require people to do things differently. So this is in the way that we travel, in the way that we heat our homes, and also in the food that we eat. As well as doing things differently, we also need to think about things differently. Being open to technolo technological changes is good, but it's also about thinking about how we live and how we respond to climate change as a community. Our values, so the guiding principles in our lives, as well as our social norms, the unwritten rules about how we behave, matter. And they matter for both tackling climate change as well as responding to its impacts. In order to make the changes required to meet net zero, everyone in our society needs to see themselves in the story, no matter their background, their worldview, or their political leanings. Understanding, appreciating, and respecting the values of diverse communities is central to effectively addressing climate change. So I'm going to come from understanding the impacts to understanding how we actually respond to these impacts. And one of the crucial elements of this is knowing how to effectively engage diverse communities across Oxford. So today the people of Oxford are coming together to support a shift in the social norm of how we live. And we will be collectively deciding on the transformations required for Oxford to respond, to respond rapidly to climate change. Everyone here has a right to be properly engaged in what's going to happen to their future. And it's through conversations like these 
that the space is properly given to understanding how we can best meet our society's greatest challenge in a fair, ambitious and well thought through way. Our biggest challenge is in achieving public support for a more far-reaching policy shift and the active participation in low carbon lifestyles sits alongside that. An important step in this is engaging local communities on the role that they can play in supporting local communities to adapt to the changes that are ahead of us. And because these slides are going to be shared with you, I just wanted to let you know that here is a picture actually from the floods in 2014 and people asking if they can talk about climate change now. We are talking about climate change now, which is good. But also some further reading. So if you want to learn more about how we can engage as communities on climate change, um, I encourage you to read some of these documents. Thank you very much.